Hi guys, Jonathan here again. Very excited to be in one of our firearms stores. Um, we don't usually film in um, because we have done a collaboration with the Real Time History Group, who you probably know from the Great War series, a brilliant series on YouTube that uh, went in real time from 1914 to 1918 back in 2014 to 2018, and it was amazing. And very excited that they are now doing a series on the Franco-Prussian War, very underappreciated, um, relatively little known conflict. I'm keen to learn more about it and to put the small arms in for context. So do check that out when it is live, which should be now by the time you see this. So in that collaboration, what I said is that I would look at um, some other Tabatier weapons from the family in our collection. And the reason I've come over here is that we actually have, I can give you a sort of deeper dive of the process for the standard infantry rifle, because we didn't have one of those to hand when we filmed the collab. So here is the most important of the Tabatier rifles, except it's not. This is its granddad, really, because not only does it lack the trapdoor in the breach, which we'll have a look at in a moment. It even lacks any rifling at all. Because this, the Model 1853 infantry rifle, was not actually introduced as a rifle. Due to a quirk of um, logistics and planning, it was quite deliberately introduced as a smoothbore musket because France had yet to decide on the pattern of rifling it wanted and they could simply do a recall effectively, go in and put in that rifling and create what became known as the Model 1853T or Transforme, which this isn't. This is the original Model 1853 smoothbore rifle, effectively. Um, very, very French looking arm. We've gone to a back action lock by this time. That wasn't always the case, of course, but um, becomes somewhat uh, iconic for, for French firearms design. Uh, distinctively French looking uh, hammer. It's a hammer by this time, of course, being percussion. Rudimentary sights. The French were very good about putting actual sights on even muskets, going right back to the 1777 model um, Charleville. Uh, this one is made at uh, Chatellerault, Chatellerault Arsenal, as the lock plate proclaims. So with the real-time history collaboration, we showed you the um, Carabine de Chasseur version of the Tabatier. This is the full-length infantry rifle. So it's what we'd call in the Anglophone world a three-band rifle. Although, as I say, this one's not a rifle. So pay particular attention to the back end. Um, cue the comments for my Matt Easton style unintentional double entendre there. So we have a very distinctive Knox form faceted style breech there on the muzzle loader. So that whole back end gets chopped away on the model 1853 slash 67, because it was in 1867 that this uh, conversion was done to create the Tabatier. The hammer remains reprofiled in order to strike a firing pin plunger rather than a percussion cap on the nipple, which is what we had before. And then very simple, elegant, flip open breech. Give you a good look at it there. So still a big old chamber there, because this system retained the classical French 18 millimeter caliber, so it measured between the, the lands of the rif now rifled barrel, uh, still the old 18 millimeter or 0.69 of an inch musket bore, essentially. And that's really the critical difference between this really quite sophisticated center fire rifle system that we've now converted these to, and for example, the British Snyder. So the same year that this was introduced, 1867, 
British introduced the Snyder conversion for their Model 1853 rifle. So both are Model 1853 rifles, both converted to a trapdoor cartridge system of loading, both by the same designer, actually. Um, <laughs> Jacob Snyder, the American, who, who is known for the Snyder mechanism on the British rifle, held the patent jointly with a Frenchman called Schneider, confusingly. And so these, this is essentially a cousin of the British Snyder rifle. Uh, now, the only real difference between those two in terms of capability is that massive 18 millimeter bore versus the 0.577 reduced, higher, reduced caliber, higher velocity Snyder round. So the Snyder was a more capable rifle. And of course the Chasseau was a more capable rifle. Um, 11 millimeter diameter bullet in the Chasseau and um, velocity wise you're looking at um, over 100 meters per second difference. So this would do maybe 300 meters per second at the muzzle and the Chasseau would do four, 410 meters per second, I believe, give or take. Um, that's significant. That's the difference between 1,000 feet per second and 1,300 feet per second. So when you're dealing with essentially glorified handgun ballistics, as, as we are at this time, um, those meters per second do count. Although there's a lot to be said for a big, slow, heavy bullet transferring lots of energy to the target and at close range, which you know, a lot of combat is still taking place at, you might be glad of the Tabatier with its 18 millimeter monster of a bullet. Out of a very short, stubby cartridge, by the way, um, you, can, you can get a, an idea. We don't have the ammunition, unfortunately. Um, you get an idea of how short the cartridge was from the breech. There is this ramp so that the tang of the barrel is replaced along with the, um, the rest of the back end of the barrel. Just chop the lot off and fit the new system. And the stock is relieved, same stock is cut away to form a channel to make it easier to get the cartridge in. And then when you yank on the block to eject, if you do it hard enough, this ramp will give it a bit of a, an assist. If you're, if you're holding it at the, at the waist and pulling back like that, I actually don't know what the specific drill would have been. The cartridge case will come, hopefully at least part of the way out, if not clear of the gun, whereas in the Snyder, having yanked the block, you literally have to flip the gun over <laughs> to tip out the empty case. So pros and cons to this system. The massive pro is economics. You can, you can convert stocks of millions of these things in theory, although in practice, only I think uh, less, than, less than a quarter of a million uh, Tabatier rifles and carbines were converted by the outbreak of war in 1870. So France is sort of um, ace in the hole for infantry small arms wasn't perhaps as significant as it could have been. Um, famously, this system, these weapons were used by the Garde Nationale, French National Guard. Um, the Garde Nationale Sedentaire, I believe, which is the sort of next tier down from um, the sort of fighting teeth arm of the National Guard. Nonetheless, um, very important to have a reserve of weapons like this in the event that you're getting invaded. Final thing I wanted to cover that we couldn't in the shorter collaboration is bayonets. Ah, bayonets. Um, so I just, I just grammar policed myself there. And it is the model 1849 socket bayonet. Really very little change from the 18th century, but in common with other nations, there is now a locking ring on the socket. Now, the Fr uh, French very good about having front and rear sights on even the muskets, and they're still present on this, because of course you're gonna need them with the rifle. So you simply fit it over the muzzle. Give you a better view. This is conventional, arms and armor, bread and butter stuff, but nonetheless, fit it over there turn, push it in place, and then for the mid-19th century, you are then rotating the locking ring so that thing is not coming off when it's stuck in your enemy. And it sits there off, off to one side. 
And you can see the muzzle loading legacy of the thing because it's curved off to one side so that you don't stab yourself in the hand when you are muzzle loading, which is not necessary with this, of course. But it still has that big old heavy ramrod slash cleaning rod dished at the nose for the Mini A bullet from when it was a muzzle loader. Also a cleaning rod, of course. The sights, uh, relatively simple. Uh, I believe unchanged from the 1853T. Um, I don't have one available to, to compare, but I believe that's the case. Now you might have to adjust your sight graduations because the, uh, there was an increase in velocity with the cartridge, self-contained cartridge system over the earlier muzzle loading system slightly. So there was an adjustment made to the sights. Uh, the sights are pretty simple compared to later systems anyway, even to the, to the British Snyder. We have a simple V-notch, which um, soldiers would have been used to from when it was back on the, on the barrel tank. And that is 200 meters. And then flick it up and you have a sort of modern grenade launcher-esque um, pair of, of uh, notches there for uh, 400 and 600 meters. Yes, 400 and 600 meters. So they're not really expecting you to go out beyond 600 meters with this, which is unsurprising given the big, slow, heavy bullets. In theory, the Chasseau could push out to 800 meters um, given the right circumstances and, and a really good shooter. In practice, both of them are going to be engaging at closer distance proportionately. So, I hope you enjoyed that, um, an opportunity to, to go a bit deeper into the Tabatier system. I'm particularly interested to hear from any French viewers um, that might know more than we do about these systems. We have, we have many more uh, French small arms in the collection, about which I inevitably know less, um, having quite a British uh, slash Anglophone focus. But we, we keep them and preserve them for other researchers here, uh, which is really one of the main reasons for a store like this. It's not all just locked away uh, from the public gaze because we feel like it. It's here as a reference. So a one-stop shop, or hopefully, well, might not be one-stop, but uh, depending on what the subject area is, if you're a researcher, an author, academic, collector, uh, you can apply to come in to here at one of our other stores and you can just walk down the aisles and look at what you need to look at, compare them side by side. It's, it's the beauty of a reserve collection as, as this is known. So, do uh, all the usual YouTube things, if you would, um, liking and subscribing. We have links in the description, as always, if you feel moved to donate to us. We'd be very grateful if you did, but no pressure at all. Um, we'll be here again next week for a normal episode of this series. And if you like, if, frankly, if you've ever played a video game and you like your firearms, Come and join me over on the GameSpot channel as well because we have a long-running series there. Okay, guys, take care.